Hi friends! So today we're gonna, I'm going to be talking about our Disney trip, a full recap of the trip, what worked for us, what didn't work for us. Hopefully you'll stay tuned if you're interested. But first, if this is your first time watching me, hello, my name is Gia. I'm a working mom who talks about all things about budgeting, being a working mom, Costco cleaning, all of the above. I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button down below to become a part of my YouTube family. And for those who are already subscribed, welcome back. Before I start, I know this video is super, super long, so I time stamped everything down below. If there are certain sections you want to hear my review on or want to get my advice on, uh, just look in the description box down below. So um, I vlogged most of our trip. I mean, I didn't do too good of, uh, I didn't do an extremely well job, but I did happen to get quite a bit of footage. If you're inter interested in seeing some of our Disney vlogs, you can tap this eye right here to watch them. But today I'm just going to give you an overall recap of the trip, what worked, what didn't work, what I liked about the trip, and what I didn't like the trip. Hopefully to help some of you guys who have some up and coming Disney trips coming up soon, or if you're planning a Disney trip soon, or if you hope to plan one in the future. Okay, so first let me just start off by saying it was, for those that don't know, <clears throat> it was a huge group of us, there was 14 of us, four different families that uh, came together to, to do this Disney trip five children, the rest were adults, and uh, it was intense <laughs> to say the least. It was a lot uh, for me to try to plan because I booked all the reservations, I booked all the fast passes, I pretty much planned the entire trip. So it was all on me and it was a little bit stressful, I'm not going to lie, because um, everybody always constantly comes to you as the point person like, okay, what are we going to do next or what do we have reservations for or what are our fast passes for, what's this, what's this, what's that. So it got a little bit frustrating, but I was able to man it all. Okay, so let's start with day one. We arrived at the Swan Dolphin Hotel. We stayed in the Swan portion of the hotel. If you're interested to hear like how much the trip costs, cost us, uh, how long we were staying, how we booked the trip and all of that, you can tap this eye right here. I shared all of those in a previous video. But we arrived at the Swan Hotel. We had a balcony. It was a king size room with a pull out couch. Really nice hotel. It's beautiful amenities. The staff is really, really great. Um, did I like the hotel? I like the hotel a lot. I Like I said, the staff was great, but there are some things I didn't like about it. Um, I knew going into it that it wasn't really like a Disney themed hotel, which is I was okay with. But um, we were in a newly renovated room and even though the bathroom was renovated, it was really nice, but there are other parts of the room that still needed renovation in my eyes. Like I felt like the carpet was extremely dirty. The carpet in the hallway needed to be replaced. Um, the air conditioning in our unit was like projecting moisture to the point where like the bed felt cold, some of our are, are wet, some of our clothes felt wet. I, I just felt like they needed more renovations done in the room um, than what we had. But I mean, it was a nice hotel. Would I stay there again? Probably not. Not for the price, because it is a moderate hotel. If I were to go back and stay at a moderate hotel, I would probably stay at either Caribbean Beach or Port Orleans. Those would probably be the two that I would choose between, but I probably wouldn't stay at the Swan again. Um, although uh, the location was great. I mean, it was amazing to be able to just walk to Epcot or take the boat to Hollywood Studios. It was very, very close. Uh, I just didn't like some of the things in our room, so I probably wouldn't stay again. So the first night we went and ate at the Rainforest Cafe in Disney Springs. Really great restaurant. I enjoyed it so much. Um, it was a little bit overwhelming for the kids, but I think it was a great experience for them to feel like they were eating in the rainforest. So that was fun. All the animals like move and make noise. I mean, it is, you literally feel like you're sitting in the uh, rainforest. So that was great. Um, dinner was delicious there. So we just walked around Disney Springs on the first night. So day one of touring, we went to Animal Kingdom and I'm going to be looking at my computer here because, you know, I had everything in a detailed spreadsheet for every day. <laughs> so uh, we went to Animal Kingdom. We roped dropped Animal Kingdom. For those who don't know what it, that means to rope drop, it means that you're literally inside the park. You've already went through security. You gave your thumbprint or your fingerprint and scanned your ticket and everything. You're in there at least 30 minutes before the ropes actually drop so that you can ride ride. 
rides. They do let you in certain parks, parts of the park. For Animal Kingdom, they let you in right in front of the Tree of Life. At that point, they stop you with ropes and you have to wait until the park actually opens in order to go in. So we were able to take pictures in front of the Tree of Life. It was fun to stand there. I mean, it's hot. So, you know, I suggest having a bottle, like a water bottle for your kids and yourself, little snacks for your kids, something to keep them occupied. I mean, it, the scenery is beautiful, but you know, scenery can only keep, hold a child's attention for so long. So we were waiting there for about 30 minutes. We rope dropped and immediately went to Kilimanjaro Safari. The kids loved that ride. That was their favorite ride of the day. They loved it. Uh, so we rope dropped Kilimanjaro Safari. Then we went, met, met uh, then we went and met Mickey and Minnie um uh, for the kids and all of us to go on to talk to mickey and minnie i've vlogged a lot of this so you know if you're interested in seeing more details you can watch the vlogs but um that was great um then we went to uh lunch at tusker house and tusker house is a character meal and i really enjoyed it i the food was really good i was really a little bit at first when i saw the menu i was like i don't know if they're gonna eat this but um the kids loved it they had their own little station it was like breakfast and lunch at the same time for the time that we booked which was 11 20 um we were able to have lunch and breakfast the food was delicious the characters were okay i mean they didn't get a chance to like walk around and dance like they i've seen in some of the other um people who vlog at tusker house but the characters were great and the characters that were there were um mickey donald goofy and i think daisy was there and they all had their um safari outfits on so the kids enjoyed that but like i said the food was really good i highly recommend tusker house so after tusker house then we went to uh we they saw we saw the lion king a festival of lion king and then we had a break after that and i in my mind every day i thought we were going to have like a two to three hour break and then come back to the park to do the park in the evenings and in reality that just wasn't happening um it wasn't happening we were losing some people like some people didn't feel like getting back up and going back to the park but like i had these reservations so i'm like you have to go so i would not recommend that type of planning for anybody who has a, such a large group because everybody's energy levels are different some people's their stamina is different so they can go to the park be in the park all day and all night and keep going where some people really did and needed a break and especially if you have younger kids sometimes they don't nap at their normal time when you're at a park uh, so long because they get so excited what was happening was that we would go back to the hotel for a break and then like 15 minutes before it was time for us to meet to go back to the park the kids would like all fall asleep so that wouldn't wasn't working so what happened was we had a break we went back um, we came back to Animal King went back to the hotel we, I dragged everybody back to Animal Kingdom and we had our fast passes for the Kilimanjaro Safari at night, um, the dinosaur ride, and uh, Mount Everest for those who wanted to ride roller coasters. Now, um, first of all, the dinosaur ride was horrible. I mean, it was so scary for the kids. I don't remember that ride. I thought the ride was just about dinosaurs. I had no idea it was like this scary ride where you feel like you're in Jurassic Park. So it was kind of traumatizing for the kids. Um, so I don't recommend that for if you have younger children. Uh, Mount Everest is my favorite roller coaster and in all of Disney so I love that and we didn't get a chance um, and then the kids rode the Kilimanjaro Safari at night because uh, some of the adults wanted to ride Mount Everest again because the wait was kind of short um, for the standby wait was only like 15 or 20 minutes so we ended up riding that a second time and that was cool we were supposed to see the River of Light show but we were literally sitting there waiting for 45 minutes for the show to start because of weather it just didn't start it's cloudy it's all um, the River of Light show is operated with drones and satellites in the cloud so if it's a cloudy night it's just not gonna work so that's what happened with us and we didn't get a chance to see it which is kind of disappointing okay so day two we went to Hollywood Studios and we rope dropped again um, for the kids to um, well we when we rope dropped the adults who wanted to ride Tower of Terror that's what we rode. We rode Tower of Terror at Rope Drop and some of the kids went and go to go meet the Toy Story characters. Then we had a breakfast reservation at Hollywood and Vine. That was my favorite character meal of the whole trip because um, uh, it was my kids favorite characters. Of course, Disney Junior, you got Doc McStuffin, Sophia, Hanny Manny and Jake. They loved it and it, the food was so good. It was a uh, buffet style. 
Uh, it was like I said, because of the time, I think we had our reservations were at um, 10. Um, and towards the end, at like 10, 45, 11, they started bringing out lunch stuff. So we actually had breakfast and lunch, which was really nice. The food was very, very good. I highly recommend that restaurant. Then we had fast passes for Toy Story. We had fast passes for um, the Little Mermaid show. And then some of us had fast passes for Frozen Ever After Sing Along. And then the other half of the group had fast passes for Star Tours. Great day. The kids love Toy Story Mania. That was their favorite ride at that park. It was great. Um, then we had a break again, and then we were supposed to meet in the lobby, and we had dinner at uh, dinner reservations at Sci-Fi. And the thing with the the thing that made it stressful is that a lot of these dinner reservations they they make you pay up front a deposit so that if you don't show up, you know, they're going to charge you that deposit. So it's important to cancel it within 24 hours. And so that's why it was kind of stressful for me to get everybody together to go back to the park to meet for these reservations. If I can go back, I probably wouldn't plan it that way. I would just plan the dinner reservations to be early while we're still at the park or lunch reservations and then everybody be on their own and can decide what they want to do later on at night if you have a large party. Now, if it's just you and your husband or your spouse and your kids, you can kind of figure out, you know, how your your family works and their energy levels if they're able to have that stand on to stay at the park all day. But for so many people, it's hard. So I would I wouldn't recommend that. But we had dinner at Sci-Fi, which is a really cool restaurant. It's like a '50s drive-in restaurant. Um, it's the atmosphere is cool. I loved it, but the food wasn't that good, and I don't think I would go back. Uh, so uh, again, if you like that kind of restaurant where it's really really um it feels like you're like in the 50s at a drive-in i think it's great to experience it maybe for lunch or something like that but i would not pay dinner prices for the food because the food wasn't all that great and so that was uh hollywood studios day we did see a little bit of the star wars light show that was really cool i'm not even into star wars like that but just seeing the star troopers like walk around the park that was really really cool and the kids really enjoyed that as well so day three, we went to Magic Kingdom and we had um, fast passes scheduled for Peter Pan's flight, Winnie the Pooh, and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Uh, we rope dropped Magic Kingdom so we were able to go see, meet the princesses. It was a princess day for the girls. We met um, Tiana and Rapunzel and Cinderella and Elena. And uh, like I said, we rope dropped it so we didn't have to wait very much, very long, but it does take time. So when we went in to meet Ilana, Elaine, excuse me, when we went in to meet Rapunzel and uh, Tiana, we had to leave and then get in line, a separate line to meet Cinderella and Elena. So that took up a little bit of time. Um, but after that, I wanted to try to go do Enchanted Tales with Belle and meet Ariel and her grotto, but the lines were too long at that point. I refused to stand in any any line that was more than 20 minutes. So we just relaxed for a little bit and had a snack, ate some lunch, and then um, our fast passes started for the day. And that was the day at um, Magic Kingdom. Girls also had their Bippity Bobbity Boutique appointment that day. After we, after the girls met the princesses, we had to change them. After we had a snack and stuff, we had to change them and then they went to the Bippity Bobbity Boutique. And I have a full video about that, a separate video about uh, Zara's experience at the Bippity Bobbity Boutique. You can tap this eye right here if you're interested in seeing it. So, and then the thing is we went to, when we went to go ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you know, it was important to me that the girls were kind to all the cast members and that everybody in my group was kind to the cast members. We were extremely kind to them. I mean, you should be extremely kind to anybody who is helping you or servicing, servicing you in any way, but we were very kind to them. The girls, they were given stickers away to the girls and the girls were giving them hugs. My girls are very lovable, so they, they like to hug everybody that they meet. And so it was really sweet. So we, we had our fast passes, we rode. Um, and then a Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So then the lady that were, was giving the tickets out and the girls gave a hug to, she pulled them, pulled us out. After we rode the ride, she pulled us over to the side and said, you know what? Cause the girls were like, I want to ride it again. And I was like, well, maybe next time, you know, cause we only have one fast pass. But the lady pulled us out of the line and was like, do you guys want to ride it again? And she was like, and, and the girls were like, yes, of course. And she was like, because you guys were so kind, I'm going to let you ride it again. And she literally just walked us up into the front of the line. And we got to ride in the very front of the next ride. I
amazing and that was just because we were kind you know my girls were sweet to the to the cast members she just let us um, walk up and ride it again so we were able to ride seven doors mine train twice back to back so that was amazing that's why it's really important to me that the kids um respect everybody or anybody we're in contact with um especially at disney because like little things like that make your uh, experience magical so that was really really cool that we get we got to do that so that was a fun day and so then the next day um day four we got a little bit br a break we were able to sleep in we went to blizzard beach that day um the weather was kind of rainy we were actually debating whether or not we should go i don't have any footage from blizzard beach because i didn't really know how to use my gopro so uh yeah blizzard beach that was my first time ever at blizzard beach it was okay i wasn't really that impressed i really went because everyone said that their kids section the kids park like the kids water park section was was better than typhoon lagoon so that's really the only reason why we went to blizzard beach but they had these like kind of these hard leaves that were all over the ground they were really really hard falling from the trees to the point where it hurt your foot if you stepped on them and you really had to have water socks at all times that was my one complaint about blizzard beach it's not very big it's still a nice park but i prefer typhoon lagoon i probably wouldn't go back to blizzard beach but the kids had a great time we had a great time we ended up getting poured on we were stuck underneath a pavilion and it, and it was pouring rain we kind of had to wait until that eased up to leave but um it was still a fun day so then day five was epcot day and um at epcot we had fast passes scheduled for spaceship earth frozen and turtle talk with crush uh, we rope dropped Epcot. We were able to walk right over from our uh, the location of our hotel, which was great. Um, and what we did was we rope dropped Soren, and that was really fun. We only waited for about 15 minutes to get on Soren. Soren is like one of my favorite, was my absolute favorite ride in all of Disney until Pandora, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Epcot was great uh i loved it so we rope drop soren which was cool and then we walked over and did turtle talk with crush which was great and then um we had uh fast passes for spaceship earth um well, sometimes you need a fast pass for spaceship earth sometimes you don't it just it's a timing thing most people get at the park between 10 and 11 and that's like the first thing they want to do with spaceship earth so if you could book your fast passes between 10 and 11 that's fine but if you wait till later on in the day you don't really need a fast pass for it so we did spaceship earth and then we had lunch at we had lunch at napoli in italy in the italy section of uh, italian section of uh, epcot which was it was delicious that was my first time there the pizza was good the lasagna was good highly recommend that restaurant it was very good then we had the girls met uh, anna and elsa which was nice the wait wasn't long at all they don't have fast passes available for to meet anna and elsa you just kind of have to wait wasn't long at all 15 minute wait then we rode frozen ever after and we had fast passes all of us have fast passes for frozen ever after it was a fun ride um would i wait two hours for that ride no i don't think it's worth a two hour wait but if you can get a fast pass for it you can you know it's 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 worth it to me that's why it's so important to book your fast passes the minute they are available 6 30 in the morning i was on my computer ready to book everybody's fast passes for that on uh, my 60 day mark out um and so uh yeah it was nice uh frozen ever after uh we rode ellen's energy adventure and we kind of walked around epcot what i love about epcot is that it is uh, the largest park so it doesn't feel as crowded like when you're in magic kingdom and you could literally be like walking through the crowds like this but at epcot it's kind of spread out you don't feel that as much and it's beautiful of course it was a flower and garden festival so there's flowers everywhere i mean it was, it's beautiful visually um it's just a fun park um and, it, and it's not they don't have as many rides to do um so it can get you know for the younger kids you know they were like well when are we gonna ride when are we gonna ride but you know they don't understand that you know some of the shows are like rides and stuff like that so um it was fun we went to image works um so they got to see some of that stuff and it was it was a fun day at epcot so then day six was uh, Magic Kingdom again and we this time we rope dropped to, to for the girls to see Enchanted Tales with Belle and meet Ariel in her grotto then we kind of had a snack and wait um we had fast passes for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train It's a Small World and Buzz Lightyear this time for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train we used the rider switch in order for the girls to ride twice and what happens is since Ava wasn't tall enough to ride 
you use your fast pass and you ask for a ride or switch they give you a card you ride the ride like normal and then when you're ready to go back with the card you could take three people with you well three in total so you and two other people so that's what we did to ride twice this time um and then I booked the fast passes for some people who did not want to ride it again. So the girl, we use their fast passes in order to ride twice. But it's a fun, it's such a cute ride. Such a fun little roller coaster. That was Zara's first like real roller coaster besides like the county fair and stuff like that. And she fell in love with it. She loved it. It was so cute. Um, so that's what we did. And then, um, oh, I forgot to mention that on day three, we had dinner at Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest is beautiful inside, and the food was really, really good for me, to me. Now the kids menu, the food, eh, wasn't that good, but the normal menu, the food was really good. I mean, and the atmosphere itself was so beautiful. It just, you literally felt like you were in Bell's Castle eating dinner with the Beast. I mean, it was really, really nice. And so we had reservations on day six for Cinderella's Royal Table, but it was for 8.45 at night because that's the best that I could get when I booked our reservations. Um, and so I ended up canceling that because it was just too late. I knew it was gonna be hard for me to get everybody together. And I knew we had a long day coming up for Pandora the next day. So we um, canceled those reservations, but we still had a great time at Magic Kingdom. Th at this point, the park is packed. Everybody's in town for the Pandora opening and the park, Magic Kingdom was jam packed on that last day, that Friday. Um, uh, it was just jam packed. So the next morning, Disney announced that they were gonna be changing the extra magic hours for Animal Kingdom because of the Pandora opening. Instead of them opening it at eight, they were gonna open it at 7 a.m. So we literally get park the car at 6.20 a.m., all 14 of us, to get into Pandora. The line was crazy. It was like pure bedlam everywhere for people to get in. It was so crowded that Disney didn't even ask for your fingerprint this time. They just asked for your ticket, that's it. And the only way that they were able, you were able to tell if you can get in that early, because it was technically at extra magic hours, is you either had to show your room key or scan your ticket or magic band to show that you were on a Disney resort. So we had to show our room keys in order to go in and stand in line for Pandora. Uh, we, were, we had a pretty good spot. It wasn't bad at all. So at six by 6.30. So at seven when the park opened, we immediately got in line for Flight of Passage and we waited for about an hour to go on Flight of Passage. And it, I cannot tell you guys how amazing that ride is it was it was the best ride hands down that i've ever been on and anytime i go to disney now i'm gonna have to have a fast pass for it and i'm gonna have to go to pan to to ride it it was amazing as we're walking in the scenery itself it's so breathtaking i mean i know everybody's seen the 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 commercials on tv disney's really been pushing this quite a bit the pictures but it doesn't know justice just the magnitude of these floating mountains. It's just so beautiful, such beautiful scenery. It's not a huge section of the park, but it was beautiful. So um, after we rode Flight of Passage, uh, we stood in line for the Navi River ride. Now we stood and waited in line for two and a half hours for that Navi River ride. And at this point, everybody's getting kind of hungry, getting cranky, the kids were having meltdowns. It was tough, but we wanted to ride it because we were there and I didn't know when we were gonna be going back. So we just, you know, tucked it out and rode it. Now the Navi River ride was absolutely beautiful, but was it worth two and a half hours? Absolutely not. The ride literally, I would say is about 45 seconds long. It's not a long ride at all. Okay, I'm being dramatic. Maybe a minute at the most, but it was so short. I was like, are you kidding me? It's over? I, I was just disappointed in that because I wait, we waited so long for it. So I wouldn't recommend that. If you had a choice between Flight of Passage and Navi River Ride, I would highly, highly recommend Flight of Passage, especially uh, if you can get a fast pass. It's even hard for annual pass holders, holders to get fast passes at this point for, um, Pandora, but for sure next time we go we have to spend a little time in Pandora. It's beautiful Let me show you guys the pamphlet. This is the pamphlet in the new um, The new map of Animal Kingdom to include Pandora on it because before the opening You couldn't get this So here's the map oh, You guys can see here's the normal map of um, Here's the map of Animal Kingdom and Pandora is down here, this section. There's only two rides. I mean, I feel like they're going to expand it, 
but this is the section right here it's a, it's a small section but it's it's really nice it was to the point it was so crowded it was an hour wait just to get into the gift shop in pandora crazy okay so we rode those two rides and then we it was time for us to leave and get back on the road to come back to Georgia. Um, Cause we added that extra day while we were there. It was only $19 to add the extra day because we had five day park hopper passes with fun day activities as well. I know they don't sell them anymore, but that's what we had. So in order to add the extra day to go to Pandora, it was literally $19 per person, which was amazing. Um, yeah, so when we were leaving, the wait just to get into the Pandora section of the park was a five hour wait, okay? And then once you get into the park to ride Flight of Passage was a four and a half hour wait. I think it was 250 minutes or something like that. And uh, the Navi River ride was 200 minutes or something or, or 290 minutes or something like crazy. Even now when I go on the app and look at it, it's still like 250 minutes long the wait i mean it's crazy it, but that ride is so good that it's worth it well i don't know four and a half hours is a long time if you can get a fast pass buy it just get that fast pass but um it's a beautiful park highly recommended um of all ages to go zara even rode a flight of passage and i thought she was going to be scared but she loved it she it was so beautiful from the way it smells from the way it feels from what you see visually, I mean, it, it stimulates all of your senses. Really, really cool ride. That's it, guys. I know this has been a long video. I timestamped it down below so that you can kind of skip to where you need to go uh, for the information. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, tap my picture up above. And you can also check out my previous video right over here and all my social media platforms all listed down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.